A lot of people think Georgia, you automatically think Atlanta. No, this is happening about 45 minutes northeast of the city. And so producers have sort of put together a map for you so that we can give you perspective on where all of this is happening. Even in regards to the trauma centers where two of those patients were taken, you see Appalachian High School there in Barrow, and then you see Atlanta. And so we're talking about at least a 45 minute to an hour drive away from the city where we are following this situation here as it relates to Northeast Georgia Medical Center and Grady. Unfortunately, both of those locations were about an hour in the opposite direction to get those injured people to those level one trauma centers. One person brought to Atlanta to Grady. Another person stayed there in the county and went to that one uh, in Gainesville. And then one other person was able to go to the smaller hospital in Barrow. We have not gotten word on where the fourth injured person has gone. Again, these numbers coming from NBC News, two dead and four injured there in the shooting. And Aisha, we have a number of reporters, of course, there near the high school and at the hospital. We want to get right out now live to 11 Alive's Molly Oak. Molly, uh, what can you tell us? What's the update? Well, you know, Jonathan, when I was talking with Aisha and Cheryl earlier, we talked about how this isn't only affecting the people right here inside of the school, but really the entire community. And I want to speak to that as I step aside so you get a closer look. We are now right across the street from the school. You're seeing that law enforcement presence. But we talk about the community response. I talked with a woman. Now, her child does not go to this school, but her neighbor, neighbor's child does. That neighbor calls her, says, I'm an hour away. There's been a shooting at my son's school. How quickly can you get there? That neighbor gets here as quickly as they can. They have to park their car, ditch the car, walk two and a half miles just to lay some eyes on her senior. Now that senior is okay, but he did tell her some information. He said that he was in the 10th grade hallway, that's where his classroom was, when the shooting happened. He said he was in the classroom right across from the other classroom, and that classroom was where the shooting was happening. Now, when that woman came to try to pick him up, she said she was only able to talk with him for a little bit and see him to physically know that he is okay, but she says he actually has to stick here on the football field. We told you earlier that they moved those students onto the football field. Now, she's telling me any students who saw or heard anything are now getting interviewed by the GBI, which could take hours. So she said she was heading out when we spoke with her. Again, just lots of hugs and compassion coming from the community, knowing that the kid was okay, she said the mom's about five minutes away to come and just wait on him to be done. But again, GBI, we're being told, is interviewing students on the football field who may have heard or seen anything. Also talking to a parent and a grandmother just now who are actually trying to pick up their eight-year-old who goes to the a school down the street. She says they are also on lockdown, so she's not even sure if she'll be able to get to her baby. But she says, again, that sentiment of not just hearing that your child is okay, but physically being able to see them, to touch them and hold them. That is really what the feeling of emotion is out here right now, Aisha and Jonathan. But again, we cannot express just the mass amount of law enforcement. And again, it's not just here in the county. GBI telling us earlier, it is local, state, Federal. We are seeing police and sheriffs from all over. I mean, just across from me, I see Henry County Sheriff. I see City of Monroe Police. Monroe Police, excuse me. I see Walton County Fire Rescue. So this is a state investigation. GSP passing through as well as GBI continues this investigation. We did get that small update a little bit ago from that press conference, hoping to hear more from the sheriff's office here as well. But for now, we're going to toss it back to you. But again, just a lot of law enforcement and a lot of parents here on scene just wanting to give their kids a hug and know that they're okay. Yeah, and you can understand that. Molly Oak Live for us. Thank you so much. One of the things that stood out that Molly said is that some of these students, we got to remember they witnessed this. They were in mm -hmm. the classroom. That student that Molly uh, spoke to, or at least the, the guardian said that they heard the gunfire from the 10th grade hallway. Yeah. They could see people panicking. So for some of these students, they saw this, they heard this firsthand. Just such a tragedy here in a video a few minutes ago, Jonathan, we saw one of the students walking away, just sort of holding his face, t-shirt over his face as he was walking away with the loved one that he was finally reunited with. He just looked just beside himself, just kind of considering what they witnessed, what they heard, and just, you know, for years to come, just thinking about this day. 11 Lives, Doug Richards standing by there on the ground. Doug, you were at that press conference there with the sheriff. I heard your question there at the end, trying to see